Hi, my name is John Adler. I am the VP of Culinary at Blue Apron. And today I am in our studio test kitchen making a dish that is very near and dear to my heart, pasta a limone. Pasta a limone is lemon pasta. In my previous life, I was the chef of a restaurant called Franny's. And Franny's was known for a version of this that we made with Meyer lemons. Uh, on the menu, it always said Meyer lemon spaghetti. Um, and that is how uh, I have always referred to it, but the traditional name for it is pasta al limone. So what goes into a lemon pasta? Well, lemons, of course. Um, in this case, we use both the zest and the juice of the lemon. Uh, we are using a traditional spaghetti today, which is a beautiful, long, bronze die cut pasta. Uh, I really recommend using a long noodle for this, mainly because the whole beauty of this dish is that it's a really aromatic experience. You get all these beautiful floral fresh notes from the lemon, and when you slurp up a big noodle, you get to experience that way more. Big noodles hold lighter sauces better, like long noodle. The whole sauce will coat the pasta, and so that when you take that bite, that really light sauce fills your whole mouth and you get this incredible eating experience. So. Lemons, we also need a little bit of olive oil, some fresh black pepper, unsalted butter, obviously some, some kosher salt, and a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano. Now, a lot of people will buy grated Parmesan at the store and that's totally fine. I do recommend having a fresh block of Parmesan around, mainly because this has all those little crystals in it that give it that nice umami flavor. And uh, you don't have any of the anti-caking agents that uh, come along with pre-grated cheese. The lemons traditionally used uh, are Sorrento lemons. They are from the town of Sorrento in Campania. They are a very aromatic lemon. They're often referred to as a sweet lemon. So give them a quick wash before you zest them. Um, and if you can find them, Meyer lemons are a great option, but they're absolutely not required. Like I said, this is super simple and really all you need. To make pasta limone, the first thing we're gonna do is to toast some freshly cracked black pepper. I really, really recommend using freshly cracked pepper, not the pre-ground pepper. So what you want when you use freshly cracked pepper is all the aromatics that are tied up in that peppercorn get released once um, we apply a little bit of heat to them. Uh, this is a zester. Um, it is also called a microplane. It is one of the best things that you can buy for your kitchen. I could not recommend it more. If you know anyone who loves to cook and they don't have this, congratulations. I just solved what to buy them for their birthday or Christmas gift for you because this is the bomb. Um, to zest a lemon, you could do it one of two ways. You could do it like this, facing down, but then the lemon zest is gonna end up on my board and I wanna be able to either tap it from here into a pan or into the bowl where I've already zested two lemons. So I'm actually gonna hold this up and zest this way. Now, you don't want the white pith. Uh, the pith is bitter. There are recipes where you can use a lemon pith and that's great. I don't really recommend it um, for this pasta. So generally, one swipe per section will be all you need to get the zest off. And already I can smell all the really subtle, beautiful citrus aromatics. So I'm just gonna take this and put it into the bowl here. Set this aside. And I want the juice of the lemon. You can, if you have a citrus squeezer, use that. Otherwise, um, you can just squeeze it into your bowl, into your hand to kind of catch the seeds. Definitely don't want seeds in this. Um, that would make for a pretty weird eating experience with pasta. I have never found a use for citrus seeds, so that might be something that we actually do discard. Uh, once I do this, I'm gonna grate about half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Uh, the Parmesan goes in all the way at the end, but this is a pasta that moves pretty quickly, so like most recipes, you want to have everything set up before you get going. Um, and what you really wanna do is focus on the details because this is something where, just like with any simple food, little things can go wrong very quickly because everything is so simple. So there's really not much to hide behind. Uh, I'm gonna heat this pan up a little bit. Doesn't need to be crazy hot. And while it's heating up, I'll grate the cheese. And the first step, just you know, to give you a sense of just how easy this is, the first step is just toasting the pepper. So what do we mean by that? We're gonna warm up a little bit of olive oil and then we're gonna crack some pepper into it and we're just gonna pay attention. Got a little bit more cheese in there. This is, this is a, 
a half cup of cheese for a pound of spaghetti. So I'm just gonna put, there's really not a lot of olive oil here. This is about a tablespoon uh, for a pound of pasta. And I'm just gonna crack in some pepper. And I'm just gonna stand here and kind of smell it. I can already smell the olive oil heating up. Um, I can see some bubbles around the peppercorn, so I know that the aromatics are being released. But I really just want to start to smell a fruity smell, almost like um, if you put a piece of fruit on a grill, that first or that first like caramelized sugar smell is is what toasted pepper will smell like. So I'm starting to smell that now. So the pepper smells beautiful, and I'm just going to add in a half cup of tap water. And all that's going to do is give us our base for our sauce. I know it's kind of weird to think about a pasta sauce just starting with water, pepper, and olive oil, but that is the whole beauty of how simple and easy this pasta al limone is. So um, I had a pot of water warming up um, on another stove, and that is here now. Um, it's boiling. You definitely want your water to be boiling. Before you add any pasta to the water, you have to season the water. Um, there are a lot of people who might be a little freaked out by this, but you use a lot of salt in your pasta water. Why? Because it is the primary seasoning element of the dish. Yes, the sauce has to be seasoned, but bland noodle, well-seasoned sauce, bad pasta. Salty noodle, bland sauce, bad pasta. Seasoned noodle, seasoned sauce, good pasta. So I'm gonna put in probably around four tablespoons. That's about a quarter cup. I'm gonna stir it up and then I'm gonna give it a taste. What am I looking for? It shouldn't taste bitter, it shouldn't burn. It should kind of taste like what's left in your mouth after you spit out a little bit of seawater when you're swimming down on the beach. I would say this is perfect. So a quarter cup of uh, salt for about eight quarts of pasta water. And then I'm just going to take the whole pound of pasta and put it right in. Please don't break your noodles. Somebody spent such a long time making them long and beautiful and perfect. They're gonna cook down very quickly. And as they cook down, you're gonna notice a couple of things. The water is gonna start to get a little bit uh, opaque. That is the excess starch starting to cook out into the water. That starchy pasta water is something that we will save and it will help marry together, actually emulsify together, the, the butter that we finish the pasta with, the lemon juice, the lemon zest, and the cheese. So pasta water, magical ingredient. You cannot dump out your pasta before you save some pasta water. And don't be freaked out when your pasta water goes from beautifully clear to just a little bit opaque. As I see it start to wilt down in the pot, I'm going to start to move it around very gently. And I wanna get the water in between the noodles. I have a particular personal rule when it comes to cooking packaged pasta, which is that I look at their recommended cook time and I start to check it one minute earlier than the lowest time. So if it's eight to 10 minutes, I check it at seven minutes. If it is nine to 11, I check it at eight. And I always try and account for about two minutes of finishing time. What do I mean by finishing time? After we drain the pasta out, it's gonna go into our pan of pepper water. Um, we're going to add some pasta water into our lemon zest. That's going to help release the aromatics of the lemon zest. It's also gonna make sure that it doesn't clump in the pan. Otherwise it could get really stuck together real quickly. Um, we're gonna add in four ounces of butter. So that's half a stick of butter. Um, and we're gonna glaze it. And what do I mean by glazing? I mean that we're going to continue to cook that together and it's gonna take about 90 seconds for it to develop a really nice matte finish. One way to tell if a sauce, a butter-based sauce, is emulsified or if it's broken is how shiny it is. An emulsified sauce will be pale, um, which we want. Uh, so it's gonna have this nice pale glaze over everything. Uh, if it breaks, which means that it suddenly gets oddly shiny or it looks greasy, we'll add a little bit of that reserve pasta water, which will help bring it all back together. Uh, so once we emulsify the sauce in the pan, we're going to add in the Parmesan cheese. This, especially when you're cooking with um, freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano or Grana Padano, if you can add it as late as possible, it's gonna preserve the most amount of its flavor and there's no chance of the cheese itself breaking because cheese is also an emulsion. 
Uh, so we'll add that in, and what's going to happen at that moment is the pasta is going to tighten up. It's actually going to become hard to stir and almost start to look too dry. And that's where it gets finished with lemon juice. So fresh lemon all the way at the end brings out all that brightness, cuts through the richness of the butter, and really creates that aromatic experience that we love when we slurp up the noodles. So this is starting to look good. I'm going to give it a quick taste to see if it's done. And remember, I don't want it done all the way. I only want it done with about two minutes of cooking time left. So off the bat, it's not breaking. You can't see this at home, but inside you would be able to see there is still a very fine ring of raw flour in the middle of the noodle. That's just a very, very small white ring in the middle of the noodle. So I know it's not done yet. It's also pretty brittle. But one thing I can taste is that the salt is getting into the noodle and it's really well seasoned. So at the finish here, I'm definitely not gonna add salted butter, but I likely am not going to have to add any more salt. So all the salt from this dish is mainly coming from the seasoning of the noodle and then that pasta water that we'll use to, uh, to bloom out the zest or maybe to loosen up the emulsion a bit. There are ways to, that people can enhance pasta al limone. So you could add some freshly chopped chives. This is particularly delicious if you wanna follow it with lightly grilled seafood that has, that you're just serving with like a salad, a really bright chalky white wine, like a Vermentino or a Falangina is a really nice option. Um, you know, this is a Southern Italian pasta. So like they, you know, very often things that grow together um, go well together. So you could also serve a fish in a light tomato sauce or maybe some grilled lamb afterwards, but something to stay nice and bright and light. What's interesting is that this feels very light and summery, but it's a winter dish because lemons are in season in the winter. So um, it's a way to bring brightness to otherwise very dull days, uh, which I always like. Um, and it's something that I think once people start making, they really fall in love with. I have a feeling we're, we're where we wanna be, but I'm gonna give it another taste. I didn't set a timer, because this is, it's the best part of cooking pasta. You just eat as you go. Perfect, al dente, well seasoned. So measuring cup, if you're gonna be very neat about it, you ladle it into the measuring cup. I'm gonna measure about th three quarters of a cup of water, a cup of, a cup of water just to be safe. You can see it's really milky um, and that's all that very necessary starch that we need. For the sake of ease, I'm gonna drain this in a colander in the sink. Okay, drained pasta goes right into the pan. So the first thing I wanna do is just move it around a little bit because I want to start coating the noodles in that oil and water. The rest happens pretty quickly. Pasta water goes into the zest. It smells absolutely amazing. And as soon as that goes in, I'm just gonna pour that around and start to mix it up. Fancy flips. If you wanna know how to flip things in a pan, uh, first of all, be willing to make a mess. Second of all, get a saute pan, put some beans into it, and just do that over and over until the beans stop falling on the floor. But I can smell a really intense lemon aroma already, and it just is absolutely beautiful. The noodles are absorbing the liquid really well, so I'm actually gonna add just a little bit more water because I am going to put in half a stick of butter. You want your butter to be at room temperature uh, because you definitely don't want it to cool down your pasta so much that uh, it takes too long to melt. Um, so I drop it right in the middle of the pan, cover it up with some noodles so it starts to melt down really quickly. And I can already see the, the glaze starting to form. The liquid inside the pan is starting to get this nice pale opaque. Ugh, you got, I wish you could smell this. It just smells so good. I'm like such a happy person right now. So I'm now seeing this beautiful milky sauce in the pan. I can hear in the pan that it's starting to get dry. And when I move the noodles to the side, the liquid isn't filling that space very quickly. That's how I know that it's time to add the cheese. I'm gonna add the cheese in and now 
I'm gonna stir, toss, stir, toss, but we are so close. So it's fully glazed now. The cheese is fully melted. I'm going to add in my lemon juice, juicy lemons. I may not use all of this, but I'm gonna add in my lemon juice and I'm actually gonna turn the heat off. And the reason I'm gonna turn the heat off is at this point, I don't wanna cook out any of that freshness. The lemon is in there to bring, to really like tie it all together. Um, and I don't wanna start cooking out that flavor and having, and having it dissipate. So you can see this incredibly well-coated noodle. It smells unreal. The, the secret is in the sauce, as they say, to use the cliche, of course, but it's just about paying attention to the details. And with all simple food, simple food is, is hard to do well because it requires you to pay attention. But when you do pay attention, you really get something absolutely magical. Happy dance and all the rest of it. Perfect. So time to plate. Um, like I said, very simple. Uh, it's, you can do the thing with tongs or tweezers where you kind of twist it up. My general feeling is once pasta is ready, serve it as fast as possible. You don't want to make it look messy, but people are waiting. If, if, if all there is is five ingredients, you don't need to do too much in terms of garnishing. And we're just gonna drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. Um, if you like simple food, this is a great recipe. If you like pasta, this is a great recipe. If you like Italian food, this is a great recipe. If you like videos like this, come back for more. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy. Buon appetito. Bellissima. I'll do an impression of this. Like my kids have learned to twirl their pasta and they're like this, they like twirl it. And then they're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, guys,